Okay, so today I want to talk about the CSS clip path property. Now this is a way that we can take content and we can edit the shape to reveal part of the image. So we could create a star image or we could create a circle or some strange rectangle to reveal only part of the content that's beside it. And when we add these clipped areas, it means that any space outside of what we clip is not going to receive any sort of mouse events or touch events. We're reducing the actual touchable area of the element by whatever path we define. So here I have some links and just a pretty simple uh, rollover effect. I'm replacing the padding with a border that matches the background color. So just that with a transition makes it look like this cool little effect. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clip a sort of an arrow like a chevron like shape around both of these images and have them overlapping. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now if I jump over into the content here, we have a section that has two images inside of it. Um, this is going to be my first thing I'm using display flex to make the two images sit there and I'm going to size both of them at 60% of the parent element. That means that between the two of them there are 100 and 20%. They're expanding beyond the size of the section, but I'm going to use overflow hidden to trim off anything that spills outside of this. Now down below with the nav, we've got nav with a series of anchor tags, and I'm doing the same thing. It's going to be display flex with flex direction row for all of the anchor tags, and then we're going to see what we can do with clip path. All right. Now the properties themselves, I've put it here in a comment in the HTML so you've got a reference for all of them. There's actually a lot of different values. I'm just going to do the polygon, but there's a lot of different things you can do. If you have an SVG image, you can bring in the SVG image and point to the ID of some clip path. So there's a clip path element that you can put into SVG. You can point to that by its ID. You can say that you want to use the margin padding border or content box. So if you know the CSS box model, uh, these are the different layers that you get with every piece of content. And you can specify that you want to use a different box to reveal the image or whatever the content is. Now the fill box and stroke box and view box have to do with an SVG image. So similar idea to margin padding border and content, just having to do with SVG. Inset. Well, this is the horizontal and this is the vertical value, so I'm going to be clipping inside my content by this amount. Circle. I want to draw a circle with a radius of 100 pixels at this position on my element. Ellipse. Same idea, but you've got a horizontal and a vertical displacement for where you're putting the center point. Uh, sorry, the horizontal and vertical width and height, and then this is the placement. So within my element at 20% over and 40% down from the top corner. Polygon, this is the one that we're going to do here, where we're going to be specifying pairs of coordinates inside the parent element to say this is where we want to clip. And then a path, well, it's just like you have a path inside of an SVG element. You can write out the entire path here as a string and use that as the path for your clip path. All right, let's jump into this quickly. Now, my section, here it is. Like I said, overflow X is hidden, so I'm hiding the content that's spilling out on the left and right. I've got width set to 100%. My height is fixed at 400 pixels, so I'm going to reveal the images that I'm loading inside of there. Now, the images that are inside the, the section, I am specifying that they're both 60%. I'm using the flex basis property to sort of fill in the amount of space that we have here. That combined with the object fit. If I take this out of here, and I don't say that I want to fill 60%, this is what we have. So here's the natural. I want it to be this wide, this tall. This is 600 pixels by 400 pixels. This is the natural size for those images. Okay, great. Object fit cover. I can remove that. I'm not going to see any difference here because by naturally they are 600 by 400. 400 is the height of my section. So they're going to just sit here side by side. What I want to do is I want to fill this up. Now I could say inside of here, if we uncomment that, 
we could say 50%. And that's going to work as well. That's going to zoom in so that we're covering 50% of the section with each image. And that's going to be fine, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to clip this. We're going to be removing part of this image. And then there's going to be this big blank space. And we'll see that in a second. So I will comment this out. We'll come back and we'll turn that back on after we add our clip path here. Okay, now in the clip path, it's a polygon. So we're looking at a point that's 20% 20, 20 over, but along the top edge. Then the next point is 100% over and 0% down. And then we're coming back towards the beginning at 80% over and halfway down the image. And then the bottom right hand corner of the image. Then we're going to come back over to 20% the way in and along the bottom edge. And then back to the left edge halfway up. There we go. So went from 20% to 100% back to 80%, back to 100%, to 20%, to 0%, and then it naturally fills in this last line. So we have this shape that we've created, sort of a chevron shape. Now, this blank space that we have here in the middle, this is why I was expanding the image. So when I add the flex basis here, 50%, okay, great, there's 50%. We're making sure that we are filling enough of this image but I still have this gap. What I want to do is I want to expand this over. I'm going to increase the size of this one to 60%, which is going to push this one off. If we say flex basis 60%, now this is 60% to this point right here. Along this edge, this is actually 60% of the entire space available. Now I'm going to take this image and I'm going to pull it back over here. That's what our negative margin is going to do. There we have it. Now with this negative margin pulling this over, there's an overlap right here of 20%. So from this point to this point right here, we have this overlapping of the two images. I've pulled this one over on top. If I had said negative 20%. You can see now this is comp this is actually covering over part of the image. There's part of the image that's hidden in behind this second one. 40%. There we go. See, it's pulled way over. I want to take this. I want to push it back over so it's against this edge. We're saying 60% each of them 60%, 120. I'm pulling it back 10% so that there is that bit of overlap. And then we have this nice little space in between the two of them here. And I can adjust my page and it's going to adjust. Now you'll notice that the aspect ratio is a little bit wonky here. That's what the object fit is helping us do this object fit cover is going to keep the aspect ratio even if I play with this number right here object fit keeps the aspect ratio so the images aren't getting squashed and stretched depending on the size of the screen now you can see that the little black lines here the angle does change slightly because it's based on a percentage but that's okay that's normal that is to be expected for what we're doing here it's not really affecting the display because both angles are changing at the same rate. So it's always this nice little gap that we have here. All right, so there's a cool little chevron effect that we've added to this header image. We've got two images side by side. We've got them overlapping slightly. We've got the cool little shape cut out. And if we did have a hover effect or anything to click on these, it would follow these chevron lines. So it would follow the clipped area. Now, we can do the exact same thing down here. For these anchor tags, I'm going to create an angle. I'm going to clip them right down here. All I'm going to do is add this clip path that starts at 20% over, goes to 100%, and then along the bottom edge, it's 80% over, back to the zero. There we are. So we're 20% over, 
going to 100. And then I'm doing the same trick that I did over here to pull this back over top. I'm pulling these links back over top. My margin left on the first one is going to be zero. But my margin left on all the other ones, except for the first one, is a negative value, the negative 2 REM. If I commented that out, you can see there is this gap between them. There's where one ends and the next one begins. There's this straight line that you could draw down between the two of them like this. That's the start and the end. So to really enforce this visual effect that they are sort of on angles beside each other, that's why I use the negative margin to pull them back towards each other. And this is going to work because I'm doing active hover and focus. Hover is great for the mouse, but mobile that's not going to work. Active and focus, if you're tabbing, you can see the effect is working as I tab through all the links. All right, and that's it. That's the clip path using Polygon. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of other ways that you can use the clip path to experiment with. Polygons work really well. They let you to find custom shapes and you can do some really cool effects. Hope that helps you out. Have a lot of fun experimenting with that. A uh, copy of the source code for this video is down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.